Do you think horses can do math? Because there was this one horse named Clever Hans who supposedly could solve problems like two-fifths plus one-half. I don't know how, but he gave the correct answer nine-tenths by tapping his hoof nine times and then ten times. And he even answered questions posed by random audience members, not just his master. He was a bit more shy around strangers, but that's understandable because, quote, of affection on the part of Hans, who for the last four years had had intercourse only with his master. <laughs> I'm so immature. Anyway, this horse was quite a sensation. He was featured in the New York Times in 1904, and then a commission was formed to see if Hans really could do math. And as the New York Times published later in 1904, expert commission decides that the horse actually reasons. You have to read that article. I can't believe that 13 smart people all thought this horse could actually solve problems like two-fifths plus one-half. I can't even do that. I haven't gotten to fractions yet. <laughs> Luckily, one person was not convinced. His name was Oscar Funkst and he tested this horse much more thoroughly and wrote a 200-page book on his findings, he found that people were unconsciously giving the horse subtle cues when he got close to the correct answer, like jerking their head up a little bit or looking tense. So, if the person asking the question didn't know the answer, Clever Hans didn't know the answer either. But guess what? The trick is still done today. Hey Nugget, we're right over here. Go ahead, six and six. You right? Whoa. Maggie, honey, what's two times three? And she counted to six. For a long time after this Clever Hans incident, all the scientists were very skeptical about animal intelligence. Maybe if this Clever Hans thing never happened, more research would have been done by the time Jean Piaget was around, and Piaget wouldn't have thought children were born blank slates, and his theories wouldn't have influenced educators, and educators wouldn't have ruined math for an entire generation of students. But that was my last video. Anyway, here's what Monsieur Piaget has to say about animals doing math. If mathematique was préformed, we would have to go back to the invertebrés to find the source of mathematique. I'm so glad you said that, Piaget, and I really wish you were still around to see this. Invertebrates can do math. Uh, okay, sort of. They have a sense of numbers, though, just like us. Honeybees can not only differentiate between patterns containing two and three elements, but can also use this prior knowledge to differentiate three from four without any additional training. And a weird experiment on desert ants suggests that they actually count how many steps they take to get to their food and then use that knowledge to walk the same number of steps to get back to their nest. How do we know that? Well, you have to watch this dorky cartoon from NPR. Some German and Swiss scientists think that ants have pedometers in their brains. Yeah. The scientists put some ants on stilts. I didn't even know you could put ants on stilts. So that way they would take longer steps. And for another group of ants, they cut off part of their legs so they would take shorter steps. The ants on stilts took the same number of steps back home and walked past their nest, while the stumpy-legged ants took the same number of steps and stopped before they got back home. And so the best explanation we have is that apparently ants can count. Yeah. I want my legs back. Oh, and here's another one of my favorite studies. They compared guppies to college students and found that the students and guppies showed almost identical performance patterns. Okay, maybe not identical. The student test didn't involve any swimming. It was actually very similar to the test I took at panamath.com where you have to choose the larger of two sets of dots. The fish, on the other hand, were placed in a tank like this and tended to swim to the group with more fish. Both students and fish can distinguish numbers up to four, and beyond that, we both rely on the ratio between the groups. So for example, distinguishing six from 24 is easier than six from eight. And with training, some animals can do way, way more than that, like Ayumu the chimpanzee, and even Alex, the African gray parrot. Listen. How many? Four is right. This system, this gut sense of number, is something that's evolutionarily very old. I mean, rats have it, pigeons have it. Ants have it, bees have it, fish have it, and lions, birds, monkeys, apes, dogs, cats, dolphins, bears, raccoons, elephants, and sea lions have it. Salamanders try to eat the video showing more flies. Baby chicks choose a larger group of balls. Horses can't add fractions, but they can tell the difference between two and three. And I bet that penguins and giraffes and velociraptors and all other animals have it too. It's not just us. 